Albert Einstein and the Buddha, discovering the ultimate truth in science and spirituality. I am a deeply religious non-believer, but if there were any religion that could cope with modern scientific needs, it would be Buddhism. Albert Einstein. Buddhism possesses the characteristics of a universal religion that one might hope for the future. It transcends the concept of a personal God, steers clear of dogma and theology. It encompasses both the natural and spiritual worlds, and it is based on a religious sense arising from the experience of all things, natural and spiritual, as a meaningful unity. If there is any religion that could correspond to the needs of modern science, it would be Buddhism. Albert Einstein Einstein saw Buddhism not just as a spiritual doctrine, but also as a philosophy of life, a comprehensive approach to the universe and human beings, reflecting a harmony between science and spirituality. He believed that in a world increasingly governed by science and technology, Buddhism offers a flexible mindset, opening doors to profound understanding of the universe's nature and our role within it. Science and Spirituality What do they share in common? Albert Einstein, an immovable figure in the history of science, marked a turning point for humanity with his general theory of relativity, inaugurating a new era in our understanding of the universe. He discovered that time and space are not separate entities but are interwoven, changing according to the observer's position and velocity. The equation E M N M C squared is not just a formula. It is a powerful statement about the unity of matter and energy, opening new doors for the field of physics. But Einstein was not just a scientist. He was also a great philosopher and thinker who transcended the boundaries of scientific theory in search of harmony between science, philosophy, and religion. His view of religion was not one of blind faith, but a profound appreciation for the order and wonder of the universe, reflecting a soul in constant search for beauty and truth. Through his way of connecting science with philosophy and religion, Einstein became a symbol of unending exploration and the desire to understand the world around us. Humanity lacks the wisdom to understand all mysteries of nature. The Buddha offered humanity a profound lesson, opening the path to fully explore the infinite potential of the mind, leading to a deep understanding of the surrounding world and ultimately to liberation from the endless cycle of rebirth. The difference lies in that while Einstein sought answers to the mysteries of the external universe, the Buddha turned his attention inward, using observation, wisdom, and genuine reasoning to approach enlightenment. Both the Buddha and Einstein approached their work with a scientific spirit, but the Buddha strongly asserted that knowledge should not be accepted blindly. He encouraged verification through personal experience and reasoning, an open approach that accepts only what has been proven to be true. With this method, the Buddha achieved the profound understanding he sought. Einstein emphasized the importance of ethics and integrity in humans. However, he believed that the source of morality should not be fear or the expectation of punishment from God, or any other power. He said, human ethical behavior should be based on compassion, education, and social ties and needs. It does not need to have a religious foundation. It is indeed sad if humans are restrained only by fear of punishment and hope for rewards after death. If humans are good only because they fear punishment and hope for rewards, then we are a sorry lot indeed. Albert Einstein Religion and Science, New York Times Magazine, November 9, 1930. Einstein denied the existence of a personal God, but could not provide an answer to the beauty and methodical way the universe was formed. 
he expressed this as follows. I do not believe in a personal God, and I have never denied this, but have expressed it clearly. If in me there is anything that can be called religious, then it is the unbounded admiration for the structure of the world so far as our science can reveal it. I believe in Spinoza's God, who reveals himself in the orderly harmony of what exists, not in a God who concerns himself with the fates and actions of human beings. Albert Einstein 1954. God is nothing but nature. The God of Spinoza, referred to by Einstein, is what? Spinoza, a Dutch philosopher, asserted that God is nothing but nature itself. According to Spinoza, there are matter, energy, atoms, molecules, life, thought, humans, societies, galaxies, and possibly even multiple universes. But nothing exists outside of nature, including spiritual phenomena and other phenomena that we do not yet understand. If they exist, they are a part of nature. In Buddhism, there are five natural laws operating in the universe that cause everything to happen, known as the five niyamas. Karma, or action, is just one of those elements. The current condition is the result of countless changing factors. There is no single cause for everything to exist as it does. The following statement clearly indicates that, though Einstein rejected God, he was not an atheist. I have repeatedly said that in my opinion the idea of a personal God is a childlike one, but I do not share the professional atheist's fervor for battling theism, whose enthusiasm mainly stems from the painful liberation process from the religious indoctrinations of youth. I prefer an attitude of humility corresponding to the weakness of our intellectual understanding of nature and of our own being. The Middle Way The Buddha opposed the traditional Hindu concept of the world being created by God, eternalism, and also did not accept the materialism of those who do not believe in God, nihilism. He became the first philosopher to deny the idea that the soul is an immutable entity. Einstein appears to have agreed with both of these positions. In his previous statement, Einstein expressed humility in recognizing the limitations of his knowledge to unravel the mysteries of the world. Let's contemplate Einstein's words. A human being is a part of the whole called by us universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings as something separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest to us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. No one can achieve this completely, but the striving for such achievement is in itself a part of the liberation and a foundation for inner security. This thought aligns closely with Buddhist teachings, particularly the Middle Way, which avoids the extremes of eternalism and nihilism. It emphasizes interconnectedness and the importance of compassion and understanding beyond the self, aiming for a spiritual liberation that brings inner peace and a deeper connection with the universe. Einstein, the Buddha, and understanding the universe. Physical concepts are free creations of the human mind and are not, however it may seem, uniquely determined by the external world. Einstein. This quote from Einstein reflects a profound perspective on how we understand and construct knowledge about the world around us. He asserts that physical concepts how we describe and explain natural phenomena, are not uniquely determined by the external world, but are products of the human mind. 
In other words, while the natural world exists independently and follows its own laws, the way we comprehend and interpret that world through physical concepts and theories is our own creation based on observation, reasoning, and creativity. Einstein emphasized the flexibility and creativity of science, as well as the fact that there is no single path or fixed answer to any question. This opens up possibilities for innovation and progress in science, as scientists continue to develop and adjust their theories to more accurately reflect the natural world. This viewpoint also underscores the importance of understanding that scientific knowledge is not absolute. Scientific concepts and theories are always subject to challenge and revision over time, based on new evidence and new understandings of the world. Remarkably, the Buddha, from 2,500 years ago, expressed a similar viewpoint but in a different way. All notions such as cause and effect, sequence, atoms, basic elements, are all figments of imagination and manifestations of the mind. The Buddha. The self is not a rational concept. According to the Buddha, the self is not a rational concept. The self is merely an emotion. Therefore, consciousness is an illusion, and the sense of self is just an activity of the brain. Humans live unconsciously in a dreamlike state believing in their own existence. The consequence is that they become dependent on concepts and forms, not realizing that these have no more foundation than the activities of the mind. The Buddha declared that due to this misperception, humanity's liberation would be hindered. The Buddha referred to this as ignorance or anatta, non-self, which Einstein described as the illusion of consciousness. The Buddha's solution to help us escape this prison is through the development and purification of the mind, following a clear path, the Noble Eightfold Path and the Four Noble Truths. The Buddha's path also includes extending unbiased compassion towards all beings. According to the Buddha, attachment, desire, brings suffering and also prevents escape from this prison. Einstein said this prison restricts our love only to our dear ones, becoming selfish. He proposed that to escape this prison, compassion must embrace all living beings. Einstein's effort to explore the mysteries of the world can be seen through this statement. The most beautiful and profound experience is the sensation of the mystical. It is the sower of all true science. He to whom this emotion is a stranger, who can no longer wonder and stand wrapped in awe, is as good as dead. To know that what is impenetrable to us really exists, manifesting itself as the highest wisdom and the most radiant beauty which our dull faculties can comprehend only in their primitive forms. This knowledge, this feeling, is at the center of true religiousness, Albert Einstein the merging of spirit and science. Einstein, the Buddha, and understanding the universe. Einstein acknowledged that despite the human mind's incredible sophistication, it still cannot fully comprehend the universe's vast mysteries. Yet, he never ceased to admire the beauty and order with which nature operates. He called this acceptance and deeper understanding true religiosity. In an intriguing conversation between the Buddha and one of his disciples, a similar approach is revealed. The disciple asked, Lord Buddha, how vast is the universe? The Buddha replied, Does knowing the size of the universe help you escape from suffering? When the disciple admitted it did not, the Buddha taught, then why focus on matters that do not help in ending suffering? Through this, Buddhism emphasizes that instead of being engrossed in metaphysical questions and curiosities that do not address humanity's core issue, suffering, one should focus on finding the causes and solutions for it. 
Buddhism considers the universe as an endless cycle of cause and effect, existing eternally without a specific beginning, but with cycles of renewal and new eras beginning. The message that both Einstein and the Buddha share is, liberate oneself from unnecessary bindings by expanding the mind and compassion, aiming for deep understanding and addressing the problem of suffering comprehensively. Suffering and the Cause of Suffering The parable of the poisoned arrow is often used to illustrate the Buddha's lesson that those who are concerned with the origin of the universe and other topics are being distracted from the purpose of religious practice. Imagine a man hit by a poisoned arrow and his friends and family find a doctor capable of removing the arrow. If the man says, I will not have this arrow removed until I know whether the shooter was a priest, a prince, or a merchant, their name and their family. I will not allow it to be removed until I know what kind of bow was used and whether the arrowhead was of ordinary type or iron. Likely, before he learns all this information, he will no longer have the chance to hear the answers. This story serves as a lesson from the Buddha indicating that learning the origin of the universe or similar endeavors is less important than addressing immediate problems such as suffering and the lack of peace in life. Bertrand Russell, a renowned philosopher, once explained why he accepts the Buddhist view on the origin of the world. Among the founders of all the religions in the world, I respect only one, the Buddha. The main reason is that the Buddha did not make pronouncements about the origin of the world. The Buddha is the only teacher who recognized the true nature of the world. Bertrand Russell It's fascinating to note that modern scientists and psychologists pay great attention to studying the brain and mind. Buddhist meditation practices like compassion, breath meditation, and mindfulness are widely used in Western medicine and psychology. It would be wonderful if more scientists like Einstein step forward to bridge the gap between science and Eastern philosophy in the future.